So I want, I want to tell you two stories that I think relate to uh, my commit about events that happened almost exactly 20 years ago. The first uh, happened on a Saturday morning in Brooklyn. I was 19 years old. It was uh, December 1969. I was driving to my girlfriend's house to apologize uh, for standing up the night before. I even had a little bouquet of daisies on the seat next to me. Pretty sad, actually. She was very tough. Um, I had stayed after work the night before for what I thought was going to be one drink. I didn't know how it is. One drink later to another, and well, I screwed up. That was it. So I really needed to apologize. In my own defense, I have to say, I was working on Wall Street and going out for a drink uh, after a Friday night was almost mandatory. Well, it had been, it had been sleeting and raining and freezing uh, winter night going into morning, and it was, the weather was absolutely miserable. And as I was driving along, I was probably going a little too fast. Well, at least my mind was racing. And somehow, I lost control of the car. I was driving a Volkswagen Beetle, and I slammed right into the back of a double parked garbage truck. There were eyewitnesses. It was a one car accident. But on impact, both of us flew over. The car was spun, and I was ejected. I was thrown about 30 feet and landed on my head, fractured my skull. For some reason, I took a little comfort in the fact that I didn't break any other bones. It's kind of but the real story is what happened during my recovery. After I, um, I was still living home, when I got back from the hospital, I uh, was confined to a chair because I was suffering from headaches and as soon as I could lie down, they became excruciating. But I sat in the chair next to the second story window and I would look out on the street, morning, noon, night, um, unfortunately, we lived in a dead end box, so almost nothing was happening. But I became obsessed with uh, what I thought to be two rival gangs of squirrels. I mean, that's what I saw most of the time. It was pretty ridiculous, but bear with me, I had a brain injury. But uh, one day, my older brother came to visit me, and he had a 35 millimeter camera. I'd never seen one before. But I immediately saw the potential. I could photograph the squirrels. So I asked him if he could get me one. He thought he couldn't. But um, he put on tired of the camera. And the office to sell it to me, and I bought it on the spot. Well, you know, I would take the pictures, and I was living home. My mother would bring them to the drugstore to get them developed and processed, and uh, they were terrible. I mean, you can't go wrong taking a picture of a squirrel. I mean, they were technically terrible. The pictures were good, but some were too dark, some were too light. I realized that I had to, uh, um, I had to learn more about it. So I asked my mother to drive me to the library, the local public library, uh, and I tried to do some research. There wasn't much there, but in a magazine, I discovered there was a bookstore in Manhattan called the Laurel Book Center, and they specialized in photo books. So she drove me there, and I don't know what I was expecting to find, but when I got there, um, I thought it was quite miraculous. There were amazing photography books. Photographers like Helen Levitt, Lee Friedlander, Gary Winogrand, Robert Frank, and I just discovered this world that I, I would have never known otherwise. Well. I did have a little money. I was working on Wall Street. I bought up as much as I could, and I got them home, and I absolutely became captivated. I just fell in love with the idea of being a photographer. My pictures were still pretty lousy. I mean, while I was still home, I got a little home developing kit. Didn't work out too well. Uh, got back to Wall Street, traded the camera in for a much better one. Um, and I thought, well, I'll do both. I'll photograph on the weekends and uh, be a, a trading clerk during the week. That idea really didn't work. I stuck with it for about a year and a half, but the truth is I was less good a trading clerk and I was a lousy photographer. One day I walked into, the, into work onto the trading floor right before trading started. 
and I saw my boss and I walked up to him and I still don't know what came over me, but I quit just like that. And as I was saying it, I, I just felt great. It was this great release. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. People kept asking me and I didn't know what was next. I just knew that I had to make a change in my life. I had to make a break. I had to commit. So let me fast forward 20 years. I'm still a photographer. Now it's Christmas Day, 1989. My in-laws, who, um, who live in the suburbs, were coming to my mother's house for Christmas dinner in Brooklyn. I wasn't still living with her. I was, you know, was out on my own. This was families getting together. Almost as soon as they got there, I have to admit, I was a little anxious about this coming together. Uh, almost as soon as they got there, my younger sister, with her usual uh, flair for the dramatic, announces that uh, she was in labor. Now, there was mayhem, uh, as if no one realized she was nine months pregnant. I mean, she was, she was nine months pregnant. She went into labor, and everything went crazy. My mother organized a posse to get her to the hospital. My, my wife and my mother-in-law were deputized to take over finishing you know, the Christmas dinner. And I took it upon myself to um, occupy my father-in-law, who happens to be a prominent photographer. Well, this was one of those beautiful winter days, um, crystal clear. Everything looked beautiful. And I decided to, to get him out of the house and uh, take him to a place that I love to photograph. It's a little neighborhood. It's kind of secluded. It's cut off from the rest of Brooklyn by the Belt Parkway on one side and the elevated train that uh, stops in Coney Island on the other. Well, as soon as we got there, we were walking down the street. It was absolutely secluded. We had the whole place to ourselves because everyone was doing something else, busy with their families. But I knew something was wrong. We were both taking pictures of exactly the same thing. You know, how could that work? So I made a deal with him. I said, look, you go that way, I'll go the other. And as long as neither one of us cross the street, we're bound to bump into each other. I was a little concerned that he would get lost. So we did that. Well, I mentioned that it was a beautiful day, but it was exactly the kind of light photographers dream of. Everything looked even more than real, beautifully defined, crisp. And as I was walking around, I, I lost myself in it. I, it was just an incredibly great day. And suddenly, after a while, I realized um, I should have seen him by then. I looked down the street, I looked back, I didn't see him, and I, I turned to look, and there he was across the street taking a picture. He'd either ignored or forgotten the deal we made. So I called over to him, Lee, and he turned and looked at me, and I was kind of stunned by this huge grin he had on his face. So I said, look, it's about time we get back. And uh, we've been out for quite a while, actually. And um, we got back. It was still a madhouse. Nothing was really settled. But it was late enough in the day so I could pour, pour us each a drink. And when I went to hand him his drink, I noticed that he was looking at me kind of funny. What? You know, <laughs> what's that look? Um, and he said, oh, it's just that when I first saw you after um, we'd separated, you had the biggest smile on your face I'd ever seen. Did I mention, did I mention that the camera my brother sold me was broken? Well, when I went to trade it in, I discovered it was broken. Uh, I saw him a little while later, and I, and I said, you know, Joel, that, that camera you saw me was broken. I never got it to work right. And he said he knew. And I said, you know, why did you sell me a broken camera? And he said, look, in the shape you were in, I didn't think that it was going to matter one way or the other. 
So I always like to say, let me see if I get this right. I got my start in photography by accident. It was a car accident. And the first person I encountered, my brother, didn't think I'd be doing it for very long. But here I am, it's 40 years later, and I'm still smiling, and I'm still committed. And that's my talk.